Sales copy is important online. I want to show you something. A, a lot of us, a lot of us online marketers tend to argue and kind of pick at each other a little bit. But I, I'm only going to talk about my own personal experience because that, that's why you're here to listen to me. My experience is a little different than most people. I've noticed a few things as I've written different um, ads and web pages. Um, I particularly like the description tag on web, on web pages. I believe that's where people sell. Actually, the headline for your, the title of your web page, which is here, but the description of your web page is also very, very important because that's kind of where you put your special offer, you know? And think of it this way. You want people to click on your web page and actually open them, kind of like direct mail. When you send out direct mail, you want people to open your letters, right? So that's really important that you think about what your sales offer is going to be. I kind of like to put my USP in there. You guys know what a USP is? The ultimate service promise? Um, if you don't have one, you might want to think about putting one together. Mine is actually um, how to get 8 out of 10 top Google uh, spaces. Okay, hold on. How to get 8 out of 10, top 10 Google uh, ranks within, uh, within 7 days is mine. So there's a quality element and there's also a time element inside the USP. Domino's had one too. It was like how to, what was it, um, get fresh pizza within 30 minutes or less, or it's free. So think about what your promise is, your ultimate yeah. service promise. Okay, here we go. This is a real, this is a real uh, mind blower. Um, this is very similar to some of the sales copy that I write. This happened to a fence guy I worked with. He was getting 40000 a month. Uh, a little side note. People get sloppy when they start making that kind of money, and unfortunately, he didn't go for the distance. I want him to keep going with his campaign because I thought it was really great. You know, I mean, I don't know. I understand people sometimes. But anyway, the point of the story is that my headline is Tahoma, and it's, it's triple stack. See that? It's got, um, um, I've got a little warning thing here, too. Um, when you write your sales copy, think about way, ways to get people to take notice of you. Starting a, a, a sentence off with the word warning on it is a great way to do that. I like to use things like attention, warning, um, you know, uh, those are two great ones. And also, if you can um, highlight those in yellow, which is a really great thing to do. There's an algorithm that I heard, and if anybody has heard about this, uh, it's a little high tech, but I heard that Google actually um, will create sales pages a little differently than traditional websites. And I'm not sure if that's true, but uh, there's a creating mechanism for every line of copy, the way it's written, 12 point as to 38 point. Um, it just likes this format for some reason. I didn't realize I was popular on that, on that level. I just know that it looked very similar to some of the sales copy I was writing in print, so I liked it. I just kept it. Um, that's basically what you want to think about. Your heavy, your heavy offer and uh, what you're offering to people, you know? But the, the bold type is really, really important. There's, there's, nine, there's nine parts of writing a sales letter. Your headline is definitely important. And you want to think about your headline offering a problem or identifying a problem that's out there that you can fix. Start using bullet points at that, after that and start labeling the kind of problems that your customers might be facing. That's like step three. And I like to introduce a solution that I'm offering for step four and um, you know, start offering some proof of some of the things I've done, some of the kind of results that I can like do for people. You can also wire in a, a YouTube video. So that's always good thing to do. And notice that um, these are really great triggers right here. Uh, black and the red type on the white. There's no fancy coloring. I just I just say what I have to say in very you know very basic colors. I want to do that because I want to keep their focus. I want to keep them hypnotized as much as possible. And I want them to do two things. They can either read the entire sales page. You go to my website, techcan2.com, that's T E D. C A N T U dot com. You'll see how long that page is. It's real long. But um, I realize that not everyone's going to read all the sales copy. That's fine. Uh, if they can skim it, 
and just get the basic idea of what I'm about, that's great too. I want to kind of work them up. Oh, uh, when in doubt, steal. Where do you find the great words to, uh, to um, write sales copy? You can, you can go to get a book like this. Go to Amazon.com. Words That Sell is a great book. More Words That Sell, same series. They're real cheap. Pick them up. All it is, this is basically it's a catalog of words that you can use in your sales copy. There are certain trigger words that people like to see and that gets them to want to buy. So, um, I'll show you some examples in a second. These are the basic 10 rules of copywriting. Whatever you're selling out there, you have to know your audience. And it's kind of like this. I like to um, jump in their imagination and turn on the ignition switch and take their mind for a joyride. That's what I like to do the most. There's a saying I have, I came up with. A sales copy comes out of my printer, and if it feels like illegal money, like uh, counterfeit money, not that I'm a counterfeiter, but <laughs> if it feels illegal, you know you got a really great sales copy because if it gets in the hands of uh, your prospect, you know it's going to sell. It's a really weird feeling. The only way you're going to have that feeling is if you know your audience and start to write sales copy for yourself and test it. You've got to test everything you do. A lot of my sales copy that I write, I, I, um, I use the same sales letters over and over again because they have what I call a control rate. Most of my sales letters can convert on an 85% um, conversion, which basically means I don't make every sale, but usually when I hand my copy over to someone who's interested in one of my products or my services, I can close them pretty much 85% of the time, which is pretty amazing. And I have no bosses, I have no middle management, I have no one I have to report to. So that's, uh, that's a very powerful place to put yourself in. So know your audience. Also, uh, understand your product or service. We talked a little bit about USP, that's step number three. Find your, you know, your personal, your principal selling position. And um, you want to write benefit-oriented copy. So think about benefits. Uh, instead of getting into technically what your stuff does, a lot of times people like to write technically what their product or service is all about. You want to think about things like um, how to make someone's life easier. Maybe it's you're saving them time, or maybe you're saving them frustration. Those are great ones. And uh, if you start writing like that, you know, the details come later as far as what your product actually does. And um, short sentences, you don't have to write complete sentences that are grammatically correct. I know I'm like a librarian's worst enemy. I, I, I type and I write the same way that I talk. The reason why I do that is because I want to be very conversational. If I come off too thorough, or if I give too much of a story, a complete story, you don't need me, and you don't need what I'm selling. I want there to be a mystery there. So I'm not going to tell you everything when you come to one of my sites. I'm only going to tell you what I want you to know. I want you to pick up the phone so we can carry the conversation over the phone or through an email, or I want you to order. So remember that one. Um, and use uh, formats that promote. You know, uh, think headlines, because headlines is really what's, what it's all about. It's the title of your web pages, titles of your blog posts, you know, and if you start working virally the way I do, you know, think about sales copy, headlines, when you name your videos, and you send your videos out there, and they get picked up by other video search engines. It's the stuff really starts to add up after a while. And um, that's basically, you know, what you want to start thinking about.